uh, issue today is Freedom Machines uh, from a POV, point of view article that uh, was produced by uh, public television. Of course, uh, Mr. Stewart, uh, you starred in that uh, public affairs show uh, called Freedom mm -hmm. Machines. And we'd like to talk about uh, Freedom Machines from that perspective, uh, Mr. Floyd, if you uh, sort of take some time to give us some information about how that uh, film came into being and uh, some of the parts that uh, you played and to uh, move from there to talk about uh, these new machines and the technology okay. involved in it. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Haney. Um, uh, the Freedom Machine piece is, uh, was really a profound piece of uh, uh, work. I really enjoyed being involved with it because mm -hmm. what it did is it showed the different type and different levels of assistive technology mm -hmm. for several individuals with disabling condition. It really had a diverse cast of people, which I'm proud to just be a part of it. I, I'm, uh, I'm not so sure I was the star in it, <laughs> but uh, I think the cause actually mm -hmm. was the star. I think it caused uh, people to really understand mm -hmm. what it means uh, mm -hmm. to have assistive technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you notice, I've got this phone with the earpiece, mm -hmm. assistive technology. Mm -hmm. Just my glasses mm -hmm. are assistive technology. Mm -hmm. This little wooden stick with mm -hmm. the rubber tip on the mm -hmm. end, I use it in my mouth mm -hmm. to dial the mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. Assistive technology. Mm -hmm. As low tech as it is, mm -hmm. it works for me. Mm -hmm. It enables me to communicate. And that's what the whole Freedom Machine piece was about. Mm -hmm. What different types of assistive technology are available for mm -hmm. individuals like myself with mobility, mm -hmm. sensory impairments, mm -hmm. to enable us to uh, be more independent. Mm -hmm. The less that I have to rely on someone else for uh, enhances my independence and helps me to be able to go through my activities of daily living mm -hmm. without somebody being with me, doing things with me every minute. In other words, I think uh, you also mentioned, uh, at least it came out of the film, that it was more cost effective really to, for the state to invest in this kind of technology that might assist people rather than to uh, mm -hmm. not invest. Uh, speak to that. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it really is. In my mind, it's a taxpayer issue. Mm -hmm. I've talked with consumers and taxpayers quite a bit about this. And as I stated before, I had been in a nursing home mm -hmm. for um, approximately five and a half years. Mm -hmm. For those five and a half years, taxpayers were footing the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, more than $45,000 per year mm -hmm. to keep me in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. When with just a little bit of assistive technology, mm -hmm. less than it costs to uh, uh, keep me in a nursing home, mm -hmm. I was able to move out, mm -hmm. get a job, mm -hmm. become a taxpayer as opposed mm -hmm. to a tax consumer, mm -hmm. and uh, be a productive, uh, m more productive member mm -hmm. of society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem now, though, in Tennessee are uh, problems with ten care, problems with the uh, availability of mm -hmm. resources to purchase assistive technology, mm -hmm. and uh, it has put up a major barrier mm -hmm. for individuals with disabilities mm -hmm. in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I've been told that Tennessee is actually the worst state in the country to be in if you need mm -hmm. uh, assistive, assistive okay. technology or mm -hmm. personal care. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, like I said, it Taxpayers should be incensed by this mm -hmm. because it's throwing up a barrier that is causing taxpayers to spend mm -hmm. uh, money for something that could be funded mm -hmm. a lot more cheaply. Mm -hmm. You see the problems with TenCare. Mm -hmm. uh, the services that TenCare provides are being ratcheted down. Mm -hmm. to, and as much as I hate to say it, um, it's going to cost some people their lives, mm -hmm. literally, mm -hmm. because they can't access technology. They can't access the mm -hmm. medicine. Mm -hmm. They're limited to doctor vis visits, six prescriptions a year, and that kind of thing. Um, it, it's really a sad state of affairs mm -hmm. uh, for one of the great states in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in our nation. We'll, we'll have, what, what about uh, the uh, advocacies of uh, uh, people who uh, support what you're doing? I mean, uh, is there any real organization to uh, 
assist you in, 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 in bringing about a, 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 an awareness of this lack of technology and this lack mm -hmm. of uh, compassion in a real sense? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and I have to blow my own mm -hmm. horn here. Mm -hmm. um, the Center for Independent Living has been a major player in the uh, advocacy movement to, uh, 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 to bring these issues to the forefront mm -hmm. uh, in Tennessee. The Tennessee Disability Coalition mm -hmm. uh, has been uh, a major statewide player mm -hmm. in, in, in bringing these issues to, mm -hmm. to the forefront. And, uh, of course, uh, the Technology Access Center mm -hmm. and Tennessee Technology Access Project, uh, which is uh, the organization that deals with uh, assistive technology across the state. Mm -hmm. And right here in Metro Center, the Technology Access Center, like mm -hmm. I said before, is the place where you go to be evaluated, to view all different types of assistive mm -hmm. technology, um, they actually have access to um, 60 to 80 different vendors mm -hmm. that probably have uh, 100,000 different products mm -hmm. that uh, uh, can help a person to be mm -hmm. more independent. Mm -hmm. But yet still, uh, is it that they are not aware of uh, the plight of uh, dis disabled persons or what? I mean, how do you, how do you see that? Well, I think it's a, 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 a two-sided. Mm -hmm problem. One, uh, 70 percent of all individuals with disabilities live at or below the poverty level. Mm -hmm. 50 percent of that 70 percent uh, do not work at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, um, I think the big problem is, is funding for mm -hmm. that type of assistive technology. Uh, the majority of people with disabilities are unaware Mm -hmm. of organizations like the Technology mm -hmm. Access Center. Mm -hmm. And then once again, I go back to the state mm -hmm. uh, and TenCare. Mm -hmm. uh, TenCare will not provide a, a mm -hmm. high level assistive technology mm -hmm. for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, which is a major tragedy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, uh, Ms. Floyd, we're getting ready for our second commercial break. After we come back, we're going to have you to uh, sort of summarize some of the things that uh, you would like to see happen uh, dealing with uh, the uh, Disability Act and, and some of the other things. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. The topic 